I, I know there's a questionnaire, but it's usually best to actually have people fill out the questionnaire while you're running the test, and then tell them a few things that you can see right off the bat, so that they think that you're some sort of, you know, uh, what's that? Guru. Guru, yeah. Well, because what happens is you're going to elevate somebody's confidence. You know, like I'm not talking about putting somebody on a pedestal and creating some sort of a idolatrous situation, but but some level of confidence because you know, uh, like in the example of a blood test, they're checking many more parameters than this. Okay, uh, they're going to tell people several different things, but they have hard evidence, and what you're looking at is some numbers that you have to begin to you know, decipher and they're going to look at that sheet and they're going to say 1.5 or whatever, you know, like what does that really mean? Do you get it? So if you can begin to help people see, well, I can see what the problem is beforehand. And then you do want to take into account like the questionnaires. I'll, I'll give copies of all that out. You might want to retype it or I don't care if you just photocopy it. But just to go through those things, um, you're going to be able to help people develop that confidence in what you're doing because if they don't, they're not going to follow it through. Anything you can do with that. If they can experience the results in a week or two, like in the situation of some sort of counseling, you want to see them more often or you want to call them more often. You want to work with them as much as possible because they're going to not follow through. You can keep them on track and they begin to feel better in a week. They're going to feel better. You know, They're going to be happier and, and, and want to continue on. Uh, Andrea knows, but we had a lady that came in here. Well, we did a test on her. Salt number's very high. Sugar number's very high. Uh, pH was uh, kind of low. She'd already begun to take steps to raise her pH, but her pH was kind of low. And right away we knew that you know we needed to probably cut down on the carbohydrates, have her drink more water. I didn't know the situation, but then um, uh, a couple of weeks she came back and had said that she was on 10 different medications and that uh, allergies and asthma and high blood pressure and the primary thing that you're going to see that has to do with all of that is those salt numbers and so by just having her drink more water the salts came down and you know we'll get into this a little bit more but she was able to not she didn't have any more asthma attacks and her blood pressure began to regulate um, there's a lot of different things that you know you'll see, but her being here and and the friends that she was with and the changes that she went through helped to develop confidence in others too. She felt better. That's the ultimate goal, right? Help people to feel better, not be dependent. You know, in the medical profession, when somebody gets a symptom of something like maybe you know the blood pressure is high, you got a 170 or 180 that quickest thing to go for is something like, you know, Lensapril or, or something to drop the blood pressure medication. And how long will that person be on that? Until the day they put them in a casket, you know? Until they drop dead, they'll be on that drug. They never once address what might be the underlying cause. And if you can get back to that, then you've, you've saved that person dependence on a system that could abuse them sorely for the rest of their life, you know? In the, in the idea of freedom and liberty, your health is one of those things that there's an opportunity to actually have a sense of freedom with. If, if, um, if, you, had, okay, if you had some sort of um, um, like organ transplant, you have to take rejection medication for the rest of your life. Well, what happens if they change the price of that rejection medication to an obscene amount of money? And your insurance isn't going to cover it. You have to have it. Do you know what I'm saying? You have no liberty there. So this is a, an actual tangible way in which people can have liberty and you can affect that, okay? Um, sugar. The, the most common thing that, that I see in working with people um, outside of the community, but people that actually come here, like people from the outlying area have very high sugar, very low pH. People as they come in, I've, I've been working a lot more with people that are health conscious already to start with and um, we see that their pHs are already quite a bit elevated and their sugars are quite low. Um, anybody have an idea of like what they might be dealing with? When, when we start to work through this you're going to see how 
certain things are indicators right off the bat. But candida, fungal infections, uh, parasites, when the pHs are high and the sugars are low, that person probably has some sort of systematic uh, trouble. And that doesn't have to be candida. It could be a number of different things, but that's one of the things that's kind of a red flag. So, and, and, I, and I will address, you know, over the course of the week, the things that I have seen that work pretty well, uh, things that, you know, we've kind of stumbled upon recently, and, you know, just different tools, because, like, you know, there is a temptation in dealing with people to be just like the medical profession, in essence, of saying, you know, I have a supplement that I want you to buy and every month come back and maybe it's five or six things and I want you to buy this and buy this and buy this and it's a stream of income mm -hmm. and it's something that you know it's nice but ultimately you want to be able to have a motive of them being free themselves and um, we'll get into that in a little while too but uh, you know there's going to be a need for some supplementation but we don't want people to be extended for years on end, you know? Okay. Um, where my towel go? Sugar. And, oh, what you'll see when you're looking at the, at the uh, sugar numbers, notice that, you know, you could go quite high in this chart, right? I mean, you could go up to, uh, well, I've actually never tested anybody above a 13 or out of 13. 11 is kind of the maximum I've seen personally. But you can go quite high. Usually if they're in the grave, we'll go to 13. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, you're probably dealing with a, a diabetic that is just not managing their, their sugar at all. Um, what bothered me is my sugar sometimes reads 4.5, but yet I feel hypoglycemic. Well, it may because be. Because my salts are high. Yeah, it may be that there's something else that's throwing it off, and, and we were talking about that just a little bit earlier. Sometimes people actually need to be uh, elevated a bit. And overall, you know, when you're dealing with this, each uh, specific number is going to be an indicator of something. But it's going to be collective, you know, like, like you can divide it like this and you're going to see one portion, or the whole thing together. And as you put all the different parameters together, it's going to give you many different dimensions of information. And that's what, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll have a goal of doing is that we can see all these different things together. But, um, you know, we had a guy come here, uh, severe arthritis. Uh, he, he didn't have very many of his teeth left, um, which tells you of tremendous mineral loss. Uh, okay, and, and when I did the, the test on him, I said, man, your sugars are an eight and a half. I said you got to do something, you know, you're, you're you know, hitting a, a level of, of a diabetic, you know, and um, he said, wow, you know, that's, that's uh, you know, troubling and all this, you know, he acted really sorry, and I went into the bathroom to dump the specimen out, and in the, in the garbage, uh, you guys know what Reese's Pieces are? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, he had, okay, like normal Reese's Pieces has two mm -hmm. candies in it, a large one has four in it. Mm -hmm. There were two wrappers of the large kind. So while he was in my bathroom giving me a urine sample, he ate eight Reese's Pieces. You know? Uh, getting back to that point of common sense, but I mean, how are you going to you know, begin to even start working with that person? Uh, they, but the, what they want is... Uh, in his situation, what he wanted was something that he could take, that he could go about, you know, living this way and, and not feel so lousy. And anyway, everybody wants a quick fix injection. <laughs> yeah, and that's just not going to happen. And that's not what this is all about. Uh, but hopefully, we can motivate people enough that they'll see that you know, like in the end, if somebody will. Uh, another aspect is, you know, you might in the course of working with somebody get somebody to actually rage in this zone for a couple of days. Well, they haven't arrived. It's only when this area, like in the ranges that, that are, are acceptable, are maintained for a lengthy period of time, the body will begin to rebuild. So what if you rebuild for a day or two? You've really not affected much. You know what I'm saying? It's only in time, as the body begins to pick up more energy, that it will rebuild. I've uh, been vegetarian 45 years, and my, uh, my uh, P 
pH was way up in 8.0. And I read in Bordeaux's book, you take uh, Minco, which is a trace minerals and so on, it would normalize. And I did it and it actually worked. It brought it down to normal. Yeah, uh, part of that is going to do with the body's reserve energy or the idea of putting the things that are in it, even though Mincol is, is a, a basically a neutral supplement. It doesn't, like we could take a couple capsules, put them in some water and test it. It's not going to adjust the pH hardly at all. That might be kind of fun actually, but um, it's not going to change things very much. But in the body, if it's exactly what the body needs, it's going to bring it back into a more um, normal line. Um, as for like what I'm concerned with, you know, usually like in the case of uh, somebody that is vegetarian, usually the pHs are high. Usually I'll, I'll give them uh, calcium lactate and a mincol supplement. I always try to get somebody to take uh, the mincol. Like if I was to give one supplement, that would be the supplement. But um, I also use those other things to help begin to fluctuate it back in. And forth. All right. Um, Go ahead. When the sugar goes up. Does the salts automatically go up to and vice versa? Uh, well, like somebody can have high salts and, and almost no um, no sugar in their urine. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be uh, uh, like a, a test that give you no information. That would be a, a false test. Mm -hmm. You'll get that when you're working with people. You'll find that there will be tests that mean absolutely nothing, and it will seem like a real waste of time because. You went through the effort of, of doing all the steps, taking the steps to, to get the test, and it didn't work.